question that arises is, where do we study the seerah from? Where is the primary, or what are the primary sources of seerah? Now, here I am preaching to you in Memphis, Tennessee, 1429 years or 32 years after the hijrah of the Prophet. Where did I get this information from? How do I know what happened? So the question arises very briefly, I'm not going to go into too much detail. What are the sources of the seerah of the Prophet? Who can tell me the number one source of seerah of the Prophet? The most, the Quran. The hadith is number two. The Quran. The number one source is Quran. And this is a source that is overlooked by many of the people. It is overlooked by many of the people. Immediately jump to, is it Ibn Ishaq? Is it Ibn Hisham? Is it this? The number one source of seerah is the Quran. Because the Quran was revealed during the seerah, so it's catering to situations that arose during the seerah. And the Quran references almost every single major incident in the life of the Prophet wasallam. In fact, even before his time, such as, for example, Alam Nashrah Alaka Sadraq. The reference here is to when he was five years old. When the Jibreel came and visited him. So the seerah references every single major story in the life of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And even before, is there any story mentioned even before he was born? The Ashab al-Feel was before the Prophet was born. And Allah mentions it in the Quran, Ashab al-Feel. So the seerah tells us stories from the beginning all the way up until the end. When are the last verses revealed? The completion of the benefits of the Quran. The Quran is the best source of seerah for many reasons. For many reasons. First and foremost, it's the speech of Allah. So Allah is telling this to us. So can we doubt the speech of Allah? And the eloquence of the Quran is something that is unparalleled. The eloquence is simply unparalleled. How beautifully Allah describes Badr and Uhud. How beautifully Allah describes the feelings of the Sahaba and the Munafiqun even. So another benefit of the Quran, any historian will record the outward. The Quran records the inward. The Quran tells us that Right? The Quran tells us that you were terrified that day, that your throats were, your hearts were in your throats. The Quran tells us you became cowards. The Quran tells the Munafiqun, you are scared that Allah will expose you. Who can expose the hearts of the people other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? So the Quran is an amazing source of seerah. The eloquence, the power, the beauty, and ilm al ghaib The Quran explains to us phenomena we would not have understand. Right? Badr. Allah says in the Quran, we will reveal thalatati alafim min malaika munzaleen. We sent down 3,000 angels. Don't worry, we're going to help you. Uhud. Allah explained the, the, the disaster and catastrophe. On and on. Every single incident. The Quran tells us ilm al ghaib And there is no source of finding this out other than the Quran. However, one of the issues, we never say problems, one of the issues of the Quran is that, of course, it's not chronological. Right? So, we don't know the reference of the Quran simply because Baqarah, Ali, Imran, Nisa, Ma'idah are not arranged chronologically. Right? They're arranged according to how the prophets want them to be arranged. So, Baqarah is an early Madani surah. It comes first. And Iqra, which is the first surah, is the 96th in the Quran. So, it's not arranged chronologically. And another problem is that a lot of times you don't see the reference mentioned. So Allah Azza wa Jal doesn't mention the word Uhud. We need to know that Ali Imran was revealed for Uhud. That Anfal was revealed for Badr. We need to know this. And it's without, so the seerah and the Quran go hand in hand. In that you need the seerah to understand the Quran, you need the Quran to understand the seerah. So the two go hand in hand. So this is the first source, and it is the most prized source, it is the most eloquent source, and so on and so forth.